Happy Friday, Year 4. I hope you're all well and staying safe. Now get your pencils and your papers out and write down the long date, Friday, 10th of July, 2020, and the LI to write a descriptive piece of writing. Well done, everyone. What is a simile? Similes directly compare two different things using the word like or as. Now, we've gone through this before, so this is a recap. So everyone, say like and as. Repeat after me. Well done. So if you see these two words, you'll know that it's a simile. Let's read an example. Her tears flowed like a river down her cheeks. We know this is a simile because it uses the word like. This simile tells the readers that tears are similar to a river but not the same. So everyone repeat after me. Similar. Your turn. Similar. Well done everyone. Now you can try it yourself. Take a look at these two pictures and write a simile for them. So the first one is a picture of stars in space and the second one is a cat. So you can look at the cat, how it, look, how it looks like, the eyes and write a simile for each one. Do you remember what words we have to use to make it a simile? Excellent. Like and as. So pause this section and do this now. Well done, and you can take a picture of your similes and send it over to me. Now let's see what a metaphor is. A metaphor is a figure of speech that is used to make a comparison between two things that aren't alike but do have something in common. A metaphor is very expressive. It is not meant to be taken literally. You may have to work a little to find the meaning in a metaphor. Let's read through this example. Her tears were a river flowing down her cheeks. So for the simile, we were also talking about the river, but we said her tears flowed like a river down her cheeks. Now look at the difference with the metaphor. You can read it out loud to yourselves. A metaphor says that something is something else. So in this case, the girl's tears are equal to the river. So with similes, it's just similar. However, with metaphors, it's equal. A metaphor is not exactly true. It's meant to be understood as a figure of speech and not a factual statement. So what this metaphor means. A river and tears aren't very alike. One is a body of water in nature. So that's the river. While the other can be produced by our eyes, our tears. But they do have one thing in common. They're both types of water that flows. So the metaphor uses this similarity that they can both flow to help the writer make a point. As a river is so much larger than a few tears, the metaphor is a creative way of saying that the person is crying a lot. There are so many tears that they remind the writer of a river. Metaphors also help writers and poets make a point in a more interesting way. They help the reader see something from a new perspective. By describing tears as a river, for example, the writer found a creative way to describe how great the girl's sadness was and helped the reader see a similarity between tears and the river that they might not have noticed before. This makes reading more fun and interesting. So remember, we always we're always finding new techniques to make our writing fun, interesting and creative. Now take a look at this picture of a fire and write down a metaphor to go with it. Excellent. Once you've done that, you can take a picture and show me. Let's see. Now what is personification? Personification or giving a non-living object human characteristics to describe it is a common technique used in writing. Personification gives human traits and qualities such as emotions, desires, sensations, gestures and speech, often by the way of a metaphor. Examples are 
The ocean heaved a sigh and the sun smiled at us. So which words over here indicate that this is a personification? When it says the ocean heaved and the sun smiled because the ocean cannot heave and the heave a sigh and the sun, it can't smile. These are all things that humans do, the qualities that we have. However, the ocean and the sun, they are non-living objects. They're inanimate objects and when we give them these human qualities in our writing, this is known as personification. So we're going to be watching a short clip so that you can further understand what personification is. So listen closely everyone and you can take notes if you want to. So I've provided the link and you can go on the link and watch it yourself as well if you would like to. So personification is describing objects as if they are people in a way of making sentences more exciting. So for example in this clip we saw them say Jess's heart is racing at 100 miles per hour. So a heart can't literally race but it helps us to feel more involved in the story. So now I want you to take a look at these three sentences and read it out loudly with me. The man is as big as a dinosaur, the leaves waved in the wind and the sun is a ball of fire. Which one of these is a simile, which one is a metaphor, and which one is a personification, and how do you know this? So you can pause this section, write it down. Excellent. Now let's go through the answers. The first one is a simile. Second one is personification. Third one is a metaphor. So how do you know that the first sentence is a simile? Pause that I have a think. Because it uses the word as. So it's saying that the, this is he's similar to the dinosaur, but he is not the dinosaur. Second one, the leaves waved in the wind. How do you know that this is personification? Because they use the word waved. And we know that leaves, there is an inanimate object and they can't really wave because this is a human quality. However, they've given this quality to the inanimate object in their writing, which means that it's known as personification. So it makes the writing more exciting. The third one, the sun is a ball of fire. So they use the word is. So it's not saying the sun is like a ball of fire. They're saying it's equally the same. It's the same as a ball of fire. So what do you think this metaphor means? Pause and have a think. Excellent. We know that this is a figure of speech, so it's not really literal. But what it means is that the sun is really hot. That's what it's trying to convey to the reader. The message it's trying to give out. Well done if you got those correct. And if not, you can just look at your answers and see where you went wrong. Okay, so as you know, on Fridays, we always watch short um, animation clips on Literacy Shed and 
literacy shed is free so you don't need to have any login details you can just go on the link over here and it'll also be on our school website and in the description box below so let me just show you what it'll look like so let's go over here when you go on the link this will open up this short animation clip is called partly cloudly and then you can play it so you can watch this in your own time whilst they're doing the tasks so what is it about all day long cheerful clouds in the sky make cute and cuddly babies such as human boys and girls kittens puppies and other creatures and give them to storks for delivery to their expectant parents However, one lowly grey cloud named Gus has the task of creating animals that are cute but not so cuddly. His delivery stalk, Peck, gets the worst of it, being bitten by a crocodile, butted by a big horned sheep and pricked by a porcupine. When Peck sees that his next delivery is a baby shark, he grows more than a little fearful and flies away. Feeling rejected, despondent and angry, Gus unleashes a brief thunderstorm, then starts crying with rain pouring from below him. Peck, however, soon returns with a football helmet and shoulder pads, created for him by another cloud to keep him safe. Gus instantly cheers up and gives Peck an electric eel to deliver, which shocks him despite the, protect despite the protective equipment. This that time though, Peck remains in good but slightly frazzled spirits. So now I want you to carefully watch this animation and create a description of the scene using similes, metaphors and personification. So remember, get creative and create a description of the scene. So how do the characters look like? What are they wearing? What are they thinking? So remember, you can go back to the slides just to see some examples of similes, metaphors and personification and include those in your writing. So don't forget the title. And once you're done, you can take a picture of all your work and send it over to year4 at grange.harrow.sth.uk. Have a wonderful weekend, everyone, and see you next Monday.